This conference will now be recorded. Excellent. Uh, good uh, evening, everyone. Now let's call the um, Roosevelt Forest Commission to order uh, this evening on April 27th at 6.31 uh, p.m. I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting on uh, February 23rd, 2022. So moved by Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien, uh, second. Do I have a second? Yes, I do. I'll Ellen second that. Or, or Bob. Second by um, Frank we'll go, we'll go by Ellen because I saw her first. All in favor? Any uh, omissions, additions, or subtractions? If none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. So carried. I'd like to, um, on the agenda and also in person, I'd like to um, welcome Dan Ruskin, who is a new alternate member of the Roosevelt Forest Commission. As I've said to Dan, I'll say to anybody who's ever a member or alternate member, we consider everyone a member. Sometimes the votes count, sometimes they don't, but feel free to participate. So Dan, if you'd like to introduce yourself to the credit union, uh, excuse me, obviously you're in the credit union to the Roosevelt Forest Commission, uh, please do. Thank you. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm a lifelong Stratford resident, and I actually grew up in the shadow of Roosevelt Forest. And I'm very excited to be here. Well, welcome, Dan. Um, Dan actually works at the Security Credit Union, so I know Dan from a previous, you know, one of my lives here in the great town. So um, welcome to the force. I think you'll be a great addition. And Taylene, um, from a member standpoint this evening, since we have alternate members, you figure out who counts as votes and who doesn't. Do we have any members missing this evening? You have quorum with your full um with your regular members sir okay so i'll let you count the votes on, on everything so um usually it's pretty non-computational so dan feel free to participate as you would like a member of the commission so Great. what we do is if you have the agenda we go through the agenda and then we make additions omissions and recommendations so let's go to the uh First thing is we'll go to the continuing uh, items. The boardwalk on um, Orange Trail, do we have any comments on that? Is Kelly on tonight or no? <laughs> no, so she's not. If none, we will go to the dog park. Any, any comments on that? They did the chips over this past okay. week. Oh, great. And it looks good. Excellent. Um, I know there's been some um, comments on social media about the dog park. It seems like they're self-regulating themselves. I, I know Bob Levine also asked about the, um, the milling. If everyone could go on mute, Ed, I think I'm not sure if it's Ed or Peggy or somebody. Is in the background noise. Uh, Not it. I'm in a private. That's Ellen. I'm gonna. Oh, yeah. thank you. If you're not speaking, if I could just ask everyone to go on mute, it'd be a little easier. But um, the dog park. I know they're looking for millions for the parking lot area, and hopefully that'll happen. I haven't really heard too many complaints lately, so. Everything seems fine on that as well. So, the scout camps and live edge repair. Um, is Chuck on this evening or no? Um, I do know we had an Eagle Scout project going on there. Um, she presented um, one of the um, scouts, and it seems like that is going well. Any other comments, Bob? Or? Yeah, my impression that it finished that the live is all done uh up to see that that it's been done on all lean tos but that that was the impression i had from their posting on facebook mm -hmm. yeah and that's what i've seen as well so okay i will i walked up there the other day everything seems the the area looks very very good so yeah right. 
um, on ultra marathons. Um, I, so, I'm sorry, let's go to the next thing. Um, friends of Roosevelt Forest on the Facebook page, uh, Bob, I'll let you comment on that, Mr. Ford. Yeah, the, uh, you know, we have over 400 members. Um, you know, there's an occasional disciplinary issue where people start to get picky at one another. And uh, we do end up with some people who join. I opened it up so that anybody who wanted to join could join. And some people use it as an opportunity to, to put up advertisements that really have nothing to do with the force. I just take those down. I just, you know, block people who are uh, uh, commenting inappropriately. We're not going to let it turn into, um, you know, let's snipe at anybody who we disagree with at any time kind of thing. Um, so it's fine. You know, the map is up there. Uh, Lou posts things in regards to how his races have gone. Uh, people put up interesting pictures, you know, things they've seen in the forest. Um, one of the impressions is, uh, it seems to me that, somebody will post something and feel like they are somehow doing an official notification. So they'll complain about something that happens in the forest by putting it up on the Facebook page instead of calling or calling public works. Um, and typically what I do, just make a comment that if you want somebody to act on this, then you ought to call the police or you ought to call public works. Because the Facebook page is not an official way of notifying people of problems. Although it's nice to, you know, for us to be able to check it and say, okay, somebody found that there was a, a down, uh, down tree across the trail, um, which in my opinion, if we get a down tree across the trail and it's a tree that you can step over, we're not talking about an emergency. No, and, and one thing, Bob, I, I want to thank you on, part, on behalf of the entire commission and definitely the town for maintaining that Facebook page. A lot of the information we get there, we've been able to forward to the police department or public works on notifications about the down tree or the gates not open or anything else like that. So we continue diligently to monitor the page. You and I do, I, I know other members as well and um, notify police or public works when things need to be done. And I know Peggy, you're a new member, but you've been very good on that too. So. Yeah. I never a little shout out to Peggy too. So thanks. No, thanks. I'm it's fun. Not going to notify the police based on a secondhand report on the Facebook page. No, you know, but I'm saying I notify the police if the gate's not open, type of thing. Yeah. That's I mean, we're talking about I would say minor 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 stuff. Yeah, you know, we we have some members who uh apparently live on Peter's Lane and you know, if somebody's driving really fast then they get upset. No, and, and I, I'll, I'll be. I went to lose marathon this week, and yeah. people were. I walked down with my dog, and people were flying down that street. So, yeah, um, I have. You know, obviously, Ellen, you live right there, so that's something I would definitely notify the police department because that that road it, it seems to be like they think they're in the Formula One racing down there now. That's been repaved, so um, good luck with that, I should say. But, good luck with that, that's right. Yeah. So, um, so the ultra marathons, um, just so you know, um, they just had one, uh, not an ultra marathon. Well, I would think it's an ultra marathon, anything more than two minutes, but this was six hours they had a run. And Bob, yes, for, for it, I was looking for a spark from you on that comment, but. Yeah, they did one on Saturday. The weather was absolutely perfect. Um, I got I got to walk down there and see some of the um, participants from all over the place. By the way, New England and um, definitely the Mid Atlantic states, and it was a well attended event. I think they had like seventy runners. Just to comment on this, and um, you know, it, it promotes the forest. People seem to be having a fun time. I saw um, residents walking on the forest. Um, and kind of avoiding the runners, which, you know, they went on different trails. I think Lou Loban, who runs the race there, did an excellent job. It, it, it promotes the forest. It's a win-win-win for everyone. So 
that's just my comment, but I'll open it up to the members if anyone's down there or anything. Yeah, it was really nice. All the runners that I ran into, they were very friendly. I was surprised. And yeah, they started at 8.30 and finished at 2.30, I guess. But yeah, Lou said that everybody had a great time. I mean, literally, it was one of those picture perfect days for, I, I'm not a ultra marathoner or a marathoner by any stretch of the words. But um, in my heyday, I used to run in I think 57 degree weather to run um, in the woods is perfect weather. So um, it, it was nice. And I, I think it, and you know, Lou does such a great job as a steward of the forest. So um, and that's something that I want to talk about in the new business area, but we will go from there. And obviously we have the dates of the next races. Um, I think they're all kind of posted. Lou posts things, but any comments or from the commission or then the dates by the way are on the agenda if you don't have the agenda it's june september october november and december of this year so cool i i think wow. there's you know he, he's got five or uh, you have five dates in there uh i don't know what the story is with the archery because we had some overlap um do you know what yeah, who's i don't know we really don't control the archery. I, I, it's interesting, Bob. That's a great comment. Um, the archery, I think, goes through P, uh, the PD. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to acquiesce to the great secretary we have, Aileen Marsh. Go ahead, Aileen. You're on mute, by the way, Aileen, so I can't hear you. Yeah, sorry about that. So the archery is actually done through the rec department that they use the range and Lou just actually brought it up to, in one of his emails that um, he's going to try that he was able to work around it, but he would prefer that the archery class not be held on the same day as his races. And apparently, it's been a problem, and it was the first time that it had ever been brought up to the rec department. So, going forward, um, the rec department will then move their classes you know skip that saturday so it doesn't interfere with them yeah okay excellent all righty any other comments on that if hey, not, hey bob um, do you know or does anybody know are they usually the same people every for every marathon or is it uh, a lot of different people no and that's the great thing. So I, I comment on this a little bit. And Peggy, I, I saw you shaking your head. So I'm getting, Peggy, I'll yeah. ask the rest to you. So go ahead, Peggy. Well, I usually, um, I volunteer usually at the 24 hour and I would have typically volunteered at this one, but work is, but it's, um, these end up being training runs for a lot of, um, there's nationally ranked uh, runners in these, coming to these events. And then the more nationally ranked runners you get, then that encourages other well-ranked runners to uh, participate. So he actually has uh, quite a following because he also provides a lot of smaller services that you don't get at other marathons. He provides some food. Um, most places provide the refreshments or hydration, but he does a pretty good job of uh, supporting the racers throughout so it's um i think last year the at the last 24 hour there was a gentleman who was working on his oh, i just forgot what milestone but it was an it was an international milestone that everybody was watching uh to see how he finished on so it it there is a little bit of a i mean ultra marathoners are kind of a cult um a small cult group anyway so um but they're, it's still neat and if you've ever seen the enchanted forest when they're dressed up that's that's just hysterical so it's um it, it it is pleasant he can always use people even for you know a half hour he always needs someone to just walk the course right before the event goes off just to make sure something overnight didn't happen um a tree or a bridge got take you know something that would change the course all of a sudden so there's all kinds of easy ways to step in do something and not feel like you have to be there for the 
whole event of watching them go around. So I usually try to recruit some of my friends, but we'll see. Now, do most of the people tend to stay in the area overnight for a day or two? Well, on the 24 hour, it's a challenge, but yeah, depending on where they're coming from there, in fact, they were asking, you know, where are their campgrounds that they can go to uh, because they don't want to drive in the morning up. So yeah, it's, he gives them hotel, uh, hotel, restaurant. So there is that, and so, you know, the, the local business support. He limits, the, the races are limited in numbers too, obviously. So it's, and he's not bringing in a hundred runners. I think this one, I think you said 70. I thought he limited it to yeah, 50. I, I think it was 70 runners, but uh, to yeah. answer Bill's question, you know, I, I'm a big Keynesian economics guy and the multiplier effect, these, uh, <laughs> I got Peggy smirking at me here. No, but they, I'm not smirking. I, that, but the pe people come into town, you know, they're filling up their gas tank. They're getting, they're going mm -hmm. to restaurants. They mm -hmm. may stay overnight. They may not stay overnight. They're going to Dunkin' Donuts. So it, it and Bill, I guess to answer your question, you know, it's like the guy who works at Sikorsky, right? Um, he just doesn't come in town usually. He's grabbing a bite to eat. He's grabbing a. He might have to fill up his gas can. He he might have to do stuff. So there's definitely economic development to the town of Stratford. Uh, what that actually is, what's to quantify it, I I can't do that, but because um, I don't want to be that guy. But I'm sure there's a number there that it helps the town. And by the way, I just went there with my dog, and oh my God, I think I just saw our bobcat. Um, but um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but there, it, it does help the town. It promotes the town, and you know, I got to talk to a couple of participants. I talked to a, a couple from uh, Boston, Mass. They they came to run the race. It was just, it's good stuff. So. Um, it, it helps the entire state of Connecticut. So, Well, I'm thinking even uh, might it be worth us giving a handout on some of the things in Stratford. Of course, on my mind these days are the museums because June 11th, they were having Museum Day in Stratford. And we're up to so many. I think we have seven, eight, maybe nine museums in town now. In fact, tomorrow they're doing a uh, video of every museum to promote the Museum Day. So, And then speaking of the museums, Lou, um, with some of the money he raises with the races, donated made a donation to the Veterans Museum. And, and, and Lou, I, he, as you know, is a he's a veteran. He lives in town. Yeah. But honestly, uh, Bill, that's probably a good thing for him. maybe we can engage Mary Dean offline and say maybe you, we have that billboard right near the race course there and say, hey, here's some things to do in Stratford. Maybe we put that up on the billboard there when Lou has the races to promote the, the town. Aileen might actually host some people for lunch. He's right nearby. All good. Any other comments on that? I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna defer because I don't want Aileen to kill me if you're coming over lunch at Aileen's house. So. Everybody else good? Cool. Uh, park repair. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously the park hat needs always needs repairs right it's it's getting older and but um anything on the agenda that you guys see or anything egregious i should mention i, I think the, the main thing i hear is the need to uh repave the parking lot well what we do just so you know and i i can't remember the gentleman's name at the town i think it's todd is it fair alien help me here Tom, Tom, uh, Arnold. Tom Arnold. Tom, Tom Albert. Albert. Tom Albert with the uh, uh, highway so, department. Uh, yeah, so highway is looking to both do the um, parking lot and the dog park parking lot in the next, uh, Kelly's on that. I just literally texted um, Kelly within the last 48 hours. So I know that's on the, on the plan. I know right now, at, as a former baseball coach, uh, the, park, the parks department is pretty focused on getting the baseball fields ready and up into standards right now and soccer fields as well. So, but that will be part of their plan. Um, map updates. I don't have one, but I know Kelly has been working, can I use the word feverishly, on the um, QR 
chose and to get that um, in the force. I want to say if I give a good percentage, we're about 95% there, if not 100%. Aileen, I'm looking at you a little bit. Is there anything I'm missing on that? You've seen those same emails. No. All right. So we're right there. Cool. And that goes with the map update. Uh, I mean, the expansion of the forest, that's Kel Kelly's been working on that as well, uh, looking at um, state grants and local grants and local acquisition. Bill, you're a part of the town council. I do not want to violate executive privilege, but is there anything that we, you can share with us on that at all, Mr. O'Brien? Well, I, I know Kelly's always looking at any open space that's out there and trying to get uh, state grants. In fact, did anybody ever see the article that was in the paper just recently about open space in Connecticut? How they had a goal and we're coming nowhere near that goal. And they've cut back on the funding for buying open space. So, I mean, that somebody told me that uh, that Curcio property that he's been fighting us in court is now listed for sale. Um. Yeah, but I think I, they're asking a million something, and of course, the town doesn't have that right now. And he also, I think, owes quite a bit of back taxes. I, I, yeah, I, my I, wife I, said something I, about I, that I, on uh, the Conservation Commission. I'm sorry. My wife's on the Conservation Commission. She's they've I know they've had that discussion about that property, and um, that that both of those things are true. Okay. Um, any other comments on that? If none, uh, let's go to trail markers. It's always good that the commission loves to go out there and mark trails. It's one of my favorite things to do. Frank gives me a hammer <coughs> here and watches me hit someone and then I hand him the hammer back. So <laughs> Frank's entertainment, we will do that again probably soon. Um, Frank, what's the story on the trail markers? What do we need? What do we have? And where are we going with that at this point? Yeah, we, we have uh, markers for every trail. Um, we also have the ones for the dog park that we, COVID has restricted us from getting them over there to, to them. But um, a Saturday, either end of may beginning of june um i don't know Memorial day weekend is the 28th of may it won't work for people otherwise um it's june 4th uh sometime you know an hour in the morning two hours in the morning or something like that i'm sure we could we could do a, a good job there well, I will be away on June 4th, but if anybody, that Memorial Day weekend, I probably will be around. June probably 4th is also the Main Street Festival. Here. A lot of people involved with that. No, I'm saying on May May 28th. Uh, the, the yes, it is. Weekend. You want to tentatively, you want to go for that date right now? Because we're going to meet in May too. So. Does that sound good? Is there any okay, we, let's, let's, um, Let's pencil it in. Let's do it. Let's, yep. Pencil in the 28th, and then we'll confirm. Well, we'll we'll confirm via email. But let's um let's trail mark on that date. That's Saturday, Memorial Day weekend. We can meet at 8:30 a.m. You we usually meet at 8:30, and we're done by the latest, usually 10:30, 11. Right, Frank? Yeah. I mean, 10:30 is even late. It's usually Frank. Yes, can. yes, that, that would. Uh, and there's no commitment here. I mean, when I say commitment, our, no uh, commitment. our next meeting would be on the Wednesday before that. And we can. Yeah, let's firm it up that, that Wednesday. So even better. So if we can, um, let's just put okay. that in the calendar. Does that sound good to the commission, Bob and Peggy and Ellen? <clears throat> Sounds good. Ellen, if you can get your, your little tractor going there, that'd be fun. We could just, hey, uh, Lou's going to use that this Friday. Yeah. He's doing chips. <laughs> that's a fun story I should tell everybody. But um, so let, let's tentatively do that day. 
What trails are um, what trails are getting reblazed? All of well, them? Well, <laughs> it's not, not reblazed, so that's that's fair, Peggy. So oh. the the answer is yes, because <laughs> I love that answer. Yes, but we what we try to do is mark the trails that we we walk down the trails and see where we can mark. Um, so residents get don't or you know don't get lost for lack of better reasons. We try not to overmark them because I don't want Bob Ford coming to Bob David's house and yelling at me. But we try to have a good balance where we mark them, but we don't overmark them. And um, we've done the lime green trail, we've done the yellow trail, we we've done every trail, but trees fall, markers yeah, no, no. fall apart. Um, so I would encourage all of you, if you can, to saw your, I hate giving homework, or excuse me, I loathe giving homework, but if um, if we can all go to the forest in the next 30 days and come back to the May meeting and say, oh, the green trail's really bad, or the blue trail's really bad, the orange trail's really bad, we'll start on that trail and then we'll work our way to other trails or red or whatever. Does that sound like a plan? Plan. Am I, or, I'm, or someone says, hey, I, this trail is really not marked. We need to do that. Please let us know now. The silence is deafening. So I will <laughs> say we, we can kind of try to go play it by ear then. Yeah. Can I remind you guys, do you remember we met in the forest one day and you were talking about heading a new trail north to south or east to west? Do you remember that? Oh, yes. We did talk about that in New Business. Talk, yeah. yeah. We always talk about that. The purple trail we talked about. Yes. The purple trail. Yeah, sure. Yep. Okay. No, we don't forget. No, Peggy. Very good point. Um. I don't think that's on the plan this time. We're, I think we're right. still trying to reinforce the other trails, but um, I would love to do it. The, yeah, I, I agree. Trail, trail planning, trails don't need planning. Yep. You just go that, through. And... We can put that in the new business part of it, though. So we can always throw that out. So not against it. There's also, yeah, and there's also the, you know, the access from Cut Spring Road, if you want to think of that one. On the southern route. Oh yeah. So there is no access there per se. It's um, overgrown. It's overgrown. It would Very be overgrown. blazing. Uh, I mean, so this is my thought. I would like to get the other trail secured mm -hmm. and and running well, and then start a new trail. We have that, you know, the log bridge or whatever you want to call it. That is needs to be repaired. There's other bridges on the trails that need to be fixed. So I think my my hyper focus as chair, and I would actually throw out to the commission, would be getting our trails up to snuff, for mm -hmm. lack of better word, then starting a new trail. Yep. I think, is that fair to all, or does anybody have any objections to that? No, that's fine. Yeah, I think that would be my hyper focus on it, though. And when I say mine, that's just my vision. But if anybody else has other grant, you know, thoughts, please share. No, I just brought that up. I I agree. You can't just cut a new trail without planning. But it might be something. It's something to be, to think about. Is it really feasible? And it'll add a new dimension to the forest. Um, because there's really no loop. I find when I talk to people that hike or new ones, they, they expect all trails to be loops. And so one, that's one reason they just kind of set out without a real good plan. Um, and where I was going with that is we talked about a north-south or a bisecting trail kind of creates that idea for people of a loop that brings them back to the pavilion or wherever it is they started. But no, I wasn't saying let's cut a new trail. No, and, and we've actually gone, there was, this is going back, oh God, when that, whenever I got on this commission, which seems like, you know, I had a full head of hair at that point. 
but there was a point where, and Frank might argue I never had a full head of hair, but there was a point at one point where we wanted to get almost like a striped trail, which it was a real ring, for lack of better words, Peggy, to go to your point. And they wanted to start it at like point A and walk all the way around the trail to, you know, to do that. Like and a perimeter? It's not. I don't, it was more of a ring, but it was a striped trail, they wanted to call it, because it, they were going to keep the colors of the original trails, but just have a strip trail in the middle where you'd have a start to end so no one would get lost. But, hey, Bob, I, do you remember I, that at one point? Help me. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure where we'd put a trail. I'm, I'm looking at the map here, and the only large section of the forest is, that doesn't have a trail directly into it is all wetland yep that's you have to build a boardwalk to to accommodate the the trail and and the way to think of it is if you're in the parking lot and you look out across the pond the if there were a trail that were on the other side of the pond in other words you could walk from the parking lot you've looped the pond up to the left side and then you might be able to you know it, you could you could go through this area but i'm how attractive that is as a wetland um although you know a really nice boardwalk would be good but we can't get a boardwalk built on the orange trail in that section where we're still trying to get rid of those uh uh those cut up telephone poles yeah um, and, and Bob, me, that, that is so much more of a priority than a new trail and i and as i look at this map i see loops all over the place i mean yeah you have to make i agree i agree they, 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 you know it, and this is where I agree with Peggy 100%. There are loops, but it's like green to red to yeah. what? Right. Peggy just wants that striped ring. We already have it, actually, Peggy. You're right. Yeah. I, I, I have it marked that way. It's you, you know me. I don't have a lot of sympathy for people who can't find the trail, marked them every 50 feet, <laughs> and can't look at a map and say, okay, I'm walk the green and now I'm on the orange. You know, because that intersection is really clear when you get to the end of the green and then you start the orange. Um, <laughs> the, the reality is we don't get people lost in the forest. We get people who are temporarily a little bit misplaced and don't know quite where they are. But it's not like we're losing children in the forest because yeah. of this vast wilderness character. Uh, that simply doesn't happen. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've got pretty well, I, I think it's worth walking the trails, making sure that we're not missing any marks. I'm, you know me, I don't want to add more, you know, more signs pounded on trees uh, when we've got adequate signage as is. Um, so if, if you're looking for a big loop or, you know, maybe what we would need to do is to say, okay, you want to hike five miles? This is what you would do. You know, starting from the parking lot, this is where you would go. And, uh, you know, I, I, so, you know, listening to the discussion about a new trail, I think the key thing is let's get our trails fixed up and primarily that orange trail mess. That's just the boards that are bang, you know, nailed to telephone pole pieces. Um, and then we'd have to, try to figure out is there a good way to GPS that? Yeah, I, I, I mean, to, to go to Bob's point, the, the one trail I would love to mark is the trail from the, when I get right, from the blue trail to the red trail that goes through the old Girl Scout camp or that campground, if you know, on the, let me get it right here. The the western part before Roosevelt Forest. That little intersection. There is a kind of quasi trail there. If you go up the hill there, and it goes to like an old campground there, and then it goes down this little steep area to the Blue Trail. Yeah. Um, is it blue? It's blue to red. I'm sorry. It goes from blue to red. If you go that way. That's the one I would really like to get developed if I could. Um, I think it's an easy fix because most of it, I would say 80% of it's already built. It's just that one little section downhill. Um, it'd have to be graded a little bit. It's pretty steep grade. If 
Bob, do you know where I'm talking about? I'm looking. I'm looking at that, and you know, it's funny because, um, it's a. It, 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 I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I've, if I, if I've walked that section of that blue trail. I am sure you have, but um, we can figure it out how um, we get there. Now. Oh yeah, no, no, no. no. I, I, I can see where that. We've got this, this thing that's a pink trail. That seems to go in. Bob, can you share your screen where you're, what you're talking about? Is that possible or no? Nah? I've got I've got four screens up now, and uh, you're on my phone. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's okay. But um, we can, we can back in at a different. Does everybody know what I'm talking about, though? Or I do. Okay. I do. But, Why do you need to grade the? Tr you think it's too steep? Oh, absolutely. It would have to be graded. Yeah, it's it's yeah. extremely steep. Yeah. I I think we're going to talk about coming from the blue to oops, let me get it right. We look at it on, on the more blue. It's pretty steep there. There is wetlands on the left of that red trail, where I think there's some pines there, and um, there's definitely a lot of you know. You don't want to. I don't think you could disturb um, the the trees there. It's just it definitely has to be graded though. I'm not sure we're all talking about exactly the same thing. Let's take a look at it on Memorial Day weekend. Okay. It makes, you know, then we can, you know, we, we can cruise around. We can see what uh, sign, what, what uh, trail markers need to be replaced. And I want to emphasize we should be replacing trail markers. I don't think we should be adding a whole lot of trail markers unless we just have a section of trail that's, that's, that we haven't gotten to. But I am curious about that. You know, looking at our now official Roosevelt Forest map, um, there's this pink trail that I, I, I'm not quite, it kind of terminates in the middle of nowhere. You know, it's a walk out and come back type of trail. And I'd be curious about that because that would be one that has some potential to be reconnected. Um, yeah, and that, it, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Just Yeah. Uh, but I think we all agree we want to improve the trails we have today before we take on a new trail. I think. Okay. So, so talking about trail improvement, how about that mess on the orange trail? That uh, you know, telephone pole with well, board. That's exactly, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And yeah, well, because we've talked around that for a while, um, but we don't seem to be you know headed in any direction about you know actually getting something done. You know, there was the were you know had expressed some interest but then the reality is that uh i think they got involved in the project uh at booth park yeah bill i'm bill o'brien we talked about this a little bit that's uh, if you can dive in here the last i remember is kelly was doing some research and was supposed to get back to us yeah okay we we, we need kelly to get back to us because you know we started talking about this seven or eight years ago. Yeah, oh. yeah I, I agree. It's time to move on. Um, so any other comments on trail markers? Just on that, I guess. Well, uh, camera. So, and help me, Aileen. We do have some experimental cameras, I believe, up at Jared's dog park at this point. Okay. I'm not sure. You have any updates on that or at all? Or Kelly's not on board, so or I'm let Aileen is opening paper. She's looking and she's. I have not heard anything. The in February, you said <clears throat> you were told there is a beta test camera near the dog park. Right. Per Police Chief McNeil, the camera should be installed in three to six months. So that's where we are still. So I don't have any update on that. I don't. Uh, Kelly's on the call, so that's what I have. A, is anybody in the commission know anything more than I do at this point? I just I I'm, thought Chief O'Neill said that uh, 
they had put out bids for cameras, and that was the last I heard from him. I will. Aileen, if you could, could you send a quick email over to the chief to give us an update what's going on with the cameras? Thank you. you just CC me. So we can have an update in the May Commission. Perfect. Um, new business. We talked about some new business already, but um, any other new business? Um, I my team as well. Hey, Bob. Let me um mention the budget. The mayor's proposed budget has fifteen hundred dollars again this year, the same as last year. And it's interesting looking back. In in nineteen, it was eight hundred forty-six dollars. Then it jumped to twenty-three thirty-five. Then it dropped to 640 and now it's been 1500 for two years. So how do you use that or how can we use it? Madam well, Secretary, you're, you don't get paid from that is, money, do you? No, the 1500 is a zero budget because that just basically, um, it's a small, small, minuscule stipend for our, our esteemed secretary. So um, basically that's no money for the forest. All the support from the forest comes out of the public works budget. If we're doing a one time or donations made by whether it's a right brewing company or Lobin or anything else like that. So, any other comments from anyone else on that? Or? I do know, just so you know, and I, I'm looking at what Lou Loban wrote me. Um, Lou is looking for approval of races for 2023, 24, and 25. Um, I think it'd be in the best interest of this commission. And to be fair to Lou, not I, I can't see doing more than um, a year approval. I don't think we should go out 24 and 25, but at the next meeting, maybe we can, if he gives me the dates 23, and maybe the first two weeks of 24 we can do, but I, I don't feel more comfortable doing more than that. But I'm gonna open it up to you guys to see if you're okay with more than 18. I think 18 months is fair, but um, anything more than that, I just don't wanna, that, that's a big contract for the, the residents in town. Any other yeah, Bob, I, I agree. Taking it a year at a time, you know, it, like you said, 18 months maybe, and in June or July we can set next year's. But going beyond that, that's 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 just going too far. I think. I I yeah, thank you. Um, and that's just my feeling. Um, any other commission members? I don't want to you anybody but okay i think that's fine i agree so he has uh one two three four five more races that take place in 2022 right um does that make sense five more races um i have these uh, uh no we have hold on one two three four five five more in 2022 correct okay. Bob. So for him, if he's trying to be about a year in advance, um, I, I'm just trying to think about what's reasonable because he does try to, you know, to get things there on other elements. You know, if the ultra uh, marathon community, people are, you know, they're they're thinking a year or two. Ahead. So as a courtesy to look letting him be a year or two ahead, uh, is probably helpful to him. Um, I think it is helpful, Bob. I think the 18 months is fair. Okay. 18 months from now, that gives him all of 23. Okay. And that gives him, you know, I mean, I would go into mid-2024, to be honest with you, which is, well, you know. So, so is, is his request for... 2023, 2024, 2025? Yes, yeah, all the way through 25. And I think 25 is pretty aggressive. I think yeah. I have no problem with 2023, even half a year in 2024. 
but I think beyond that, it's a little bit too aggressive for my um, my palate. I'll use that term, but um, but it's up to you guys too. Yeah, I think that eighteen a rolling eighteen months is better um, because I mean, who could have imagined where we would be you know eighteen months ago, kind of thing. I think that sometimes if you do more than that, then you have to make plans and then you have to change plans. Right. I'm always, I, I guess where my concern is this, right? Say we decide as a commission, we want to do some, um, the forest has, there's some rampant thing not going through the trees, right? And we have to augment some of the trees in the forest or um, Bob Ford, I'm looking at you because I'm like, well, I'm t trying to think of the great, uh, the right terminology, but if we have to do something in the forest, if we have to make some changes, I don't want to have to say, oh, we can't, you know, take out this part of the forest because we have this disease on these trees and we have this room. Yeah. And I guess I don't want to get into a legal ease is issue with blue, but um, I guess we need that power where we could cancel these events per se if there's, you know, some force majeure, I'll use that terminology, where, uh, you know, we have a, a tree disease, so we, we have to take out some trees in a certain area of the forest. I guess that's my bigger concern, so. Yeah, I, I I, wanna... I'm not too worried about that, because if we have an emergency situation, then all bets are off. We haven't signed a legal contract with Lou. Uh, that's, we're that's doing... Fair. You know, but I just want him to know that, though. Right, right. So, you know, I, I, I would favor approving the 2023 schedule. Okay. And I think it's probably worth having a conversation with Lou that's outside the, you know, just a talk with Lou about um, what our thinking is in terms of, uh, you know, why we're not approving 2024, 2025. And uh, part of that, Probably, you know, saying, you know, our, our understanding is that we, we in essence, have a uh, kind of a handshake agreement here. Uh, we will make sure that it's on the schedule for the forest. We've always maintained that the forest is not closed to other uses during that time. And that uh, I think Lou fully understands that if we had something that had to happen in the forest, it might end up displacing uh, you know, it would have to be kind of an emergency situation. You know, it'd be one of these things where running his uh, running his race wasn't safe, or running his race was a was a, a a problem in terms of getting something done that needed to get done. I, I don't see a lot of emergencies in the forest. Um, no, and, and, and actually, it's funny that you just said that because I'm thinking, hey, we just went through COVID, right? But God forbid, you know, we have a tornado that's out trails and stuff like that lou's not gonna run the race anyway so uh, it's yeah. Exactly. yeah um by the way you know just kind of a side thing the state of connecticut is concerned about the dryness of the forest they're actually talking about fire uh fire hazards throughout the state forest as being higher than than normally expected um it's not something that we've ever thought of addressing in, in our forest i don't you know i'd, I'd just be curious if but we we have. Dang it. Rob, I'm going to push back on you. We actually have. Um, we? And I'm going to I'm going to crush this term because I forgot what it's called. But if you remember, the state of Connecticut gave us a grant, or someone I shouldn't say the state because I'm going to I'm going I don't want them to speak. Either the state or the federal government gave us a grant, and we have this pipe. And I wish there was a fireman on the, this uh, committee. It's you've seen it. It's a big white pipe that goes into the pond. Help me. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's, they, they it's use a, it's a stand a stand pipe. Yeah, they they can pull water a pumper pump truck. Yeah. yeah, so we can draw water for a fire suppression in a couple of literally within the past couple of years, Stratford Fire Department was actually measuring the trails to see how long it would take, how long how much hose it would take to get hose from both Pumpkin Ground Road and I believe um, the forest area, the Beaver Dam area, how to grab um, hose, get water suppression into the forest. 
So they have looked at that. Um, I, I like to say we're we're kind of ahead of the curve on that. Um, knock on wood, and I'm knocking on both hands here. Um, we have we have not had a forest fire, but um, but Stratford Fire Department has looked at that. And I know Chief Lampart, we actually Chief Lampart and I have had a discussion the past year on that. So okay, uh, good. Yeah, we're. It, that's good news, Bob. We're, the S, uh, you know, our paid fire department has actually looked at what we need to do for fire suppression in that area. Anybody know if Beaver Dam Lake has a uh, a, a standing draw pipe? Uh, in other words, can uh, can the fire department pull from Beaver Dam Lake at all? I do not know that, and I do not know if Engine Two, which is the closest fire engine has that um device which draws from a pond too because yeah. a lot of the engines again looking, looking at the map here and there are sections of the forest that are significantly closer to beaver dam road than they are to the pond yeah. you know but uh Amy, can you put that as a question to um the chief lambert in the minutes please And maybe we'll have the chief come on, um, or, or somebody from the fire department come on one of our committee, uh, one of our um, commission meetings to talk about fire suppression at Roosevelt Forest. That actually would be a great thing. I think that's proactive. I think it's responsive, and I think it, as all of us as stewards of the forest, we should be um, looking at that. Sure. But I will say it's not been ignored. I'm pretty proud of that. We've actually yeah. had these discussions, and again, we've done some suppression not techniques what's the word i'm looking for um actions i'll use that term yeah okay to, to stop it so cool good 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 discussion mr ford um anybody else have anything yes we have to vote for the storytelling in the forest we do. Um, Helen, help me. Uh, Helen, Ellen, help me. Uh, what dates are those? I don't remember. The, the date is date is August seventeenth. The library story walk is that what we're talking yep. about? Yeah, August seventeenth. Yes. Thank you. Um, and Ellen, do you want to make that motion? Yes, definitely. Okay, and that's all you said. Sounds like a good thing. Sounds yeah. like a great thing. Uh, Bob Ford, since you were discussing it as well, do you want to make that second? Yep, second it. Any discussion on this? And Ellen, you want to explain to the group what that is? Um, I'm not sure. I think it's part of the library. There's um, not sure who the person's name is, but they go through the forest and they pin up um on the trees and it's a story and you walk along the trees and read the story. It sounds really interesting. Yeah, that'll be good. I mean, anybody you know, has any other comments? Yeah, my comment is if the library wants to do something like that on town property, we ought to support the library. And um, it, 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 it seems like there's, there's no potential for harm and there's great potential for exposing people to the forest and being involved in a in a library related activity all good stuff agree any other comments if none all in favor aye 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 aye, aye. 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 so carried perfect thank you alan for bringing that up any other, welcome. any other new business? If there's none, then a motion to adjourn. Going twice. All right. If none, a motion to adjourn by Mr. Vavakwa. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Uh, Ellen, all in favor? Hi. Hi. Adjourn the meeting officially at 7.26 p.m. Thank you for your time, participation, and God bless.
Thank you, guys.